Okay, so we've got this website here and we're going to use it to get some data about prices for rent in Ithaca. And we're trying to answer two questions. We're trying to answer the question, what do we expect rental prices to be in about four years? And the reasoning for four years is I'm assuming that's about the time at which some of you will return to the area and perhaps even rent. So four years from now, what do we anticipate the rental prices looking like? That's the first question. And the second question is, can I afford it, right? Or can you afford it? In other words, how much would you have to make so that you spend no more than 30% on those rental prices? And that's 30% of your gross income, right? The in income before taxes and other adjustments are made. So this is an exercise specifically for Ithaca, but it, the ideas we use here can really be used in any rental market. And we're going to use a spreadsheet as well in our analysis to get a trend. And we're going to get our data from this website. So we're going to scroll down. And you can change all of your assumptions. I'm going to ask you to leave it on a one-bed apartment. You could obviously go to Studio, which is going to be typically cheaper. But then as you go up and up and up, right, those prices will cl climb. And each category, in fact, has its own trend uh, that we can examine. So we're going to focus on a one bedroom and we're going to scroll down and what we're interested in is right here. This gives us the median rent for a one bedroom apartment in Ithaca. And there's a whole bunch of years here. I'm going to click on it and then scroll up. And what we're going to do is select all of this data. So perhaps the easiest way to do that is just grab it, copy, and paste it. I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to type in the word month and then median rent. Now it's a little bit sloppy right now. We can fix that. I'm going to click over in this area. There are so many awesome shortcuts that we can use. If you press control or command and then there's two slashes. If you press control and slash in this direction, which is usually the slash next to the shift, you can actually look at all these great shortcuts. Close that. If you press control or command and the other slash, what you'll do is turn off the formatting. That basically cleans your spreadsheet up. Now what I'm going to do is center everything. I like it centered this way and then centered this way. This is a little bit crunched. I'm going to grab my column A, widen it up. There we go. And I actually want to insert another column here. This is going to help. And I'm going to call it the month number. We'll say that December 2014 is the start at zero. Now it thinks I want to actually have a dollar amount here. I don't, so I'm going to click B. I'm going to go to Format, Number, and just keep it on Number. And it's around the nearest hundredth right here. I can change that, but I don't, I don't need to. Um, you can obviously adjust this however you like. I'm going to leave it on this right here. Okay, I'm going to click the first row and bold this. I'm also going to click View, and I'm going to freeze that first row. So as I scroll down, I can always see that. And I'm just going to enter one more number in there. Now I have a trend, and I want all of the months to be numbered. So I'm going to basically select those two cells, scroll over to this blue square, click it, and drag down until I get to the very bottom. Boom. So there are 69 months in this, in this data set. And... And then what we're going to do is basically grab these two columns, go to insert. I want to insert a chart. Click that. Let's go to load. There's our chart. Looks great. But we're going to change some things in it. I'm going to go to my chart type. And as I scroll down, there's a bunch of options here. I'm going to click scatter. That reminds me that I'm actually looking at individual data points in my data set. Then I'm going to go to Customize, and what I want to do is have a linear trend or approximate what's happening here. And there's a whole bunch of options. I'm most interested, I think, where is it in Series? If I scroll down, under Series, you'll see it says Trend Line. Click that. So this is a trend line that approximates what's happening as a linear function. I'm going to actually decrease the opacity to about 90%. I want to be able to see that line and thicken it up a bit. I like it nice and wide because then that reminds me, oh yeah, this is an approximation. It's kind of a rough estimate of what's happening. You can change that thickness to whatever you think makes sense. For label, we want a linear equation. So we're gonna hit use equation. 
and that's our median rent equation. This is the equation for that line. Then I'm going to close this. Now my chart's basically ready. I'm just going to drag it over. I'm having a hard time doing that. There we go. Okay. So now I've got a chart and I've got an equation. And there's a couple of things to think about. You've got outliers like this, right? At this month, the median rent was particularly high. It's the 40th month in the cycle. And there's a couple here you might argue these are outliers. And if we were really trying to figure this out, um, and we, what we might really do is eliminate those outliers, right? And you can go in and delete them and find them. That would change your projection. We're going to leave it like this just to keep it simple for now. And what we want to think about is what this equation actually means. So let's think about it. We've got x. x is the number of months. That's the month number. The output, y, is the median rent. How much is the rent? And the linear equation tells us that it basically starts at 950, which is an approximation of where our line would start. Notice it's not on December. December is down here at 806. But on average, it's kind of like this linear function is kind of like an average of all the points in a sense. You can tell that to get the best average to be closest to as many points as possible, we say we start at 950. So that's something important to keep, a, keep in mind. If you plug in zero for the number of months, you would get 950, which is not what you would expect to pay at the zero month, but it's fairly close to it. Right, fairly close. And you might argue this one's kind of far, it's $144 away from 806. But the idea is we're approximating uh, a, cl a close trend to as many as close to as many points as possible. So if you plug in one, for example, what does that what does that mean? You get one times four point two eight plus nine fifty. So you're plugging in at one month what you would expect the median rent to equal, and that'd be nine fifty four, which is a little bit closer to eight ninety. 895, right? And on average, though, this equation will produce something fairly close to as many points as possible. And in order to make sense of this, we should say, well, what should we expect in four, four years from now? Right? Four years from now. So our trend right here goes up to, let's see, 69 months. So if we want to add four years, we would have to input a month number that's 48 more than 69. So of course 69 plus 4 years, 48, is 117. So if you plug in 117 to your function up here, the output will be the approximate median rent. So you should do that. Plug in 117. 117 times 428 and then add 950. And then that's going to give you a number. That number represents what you might expect the rent to equal in about four years in Ithaca, and then figure out if you can afford it. How much would you have to earn? And you could break down by month or year in order to be able to not spend more than 30% of your gross income on that apartment. And you should also comment what your thoughts are about this calculation process. Do you think this is accurate? Do you think it's fair? What could we do to improve it? For example, you might mention that you can delete these outliers right here, right? You might decide, and it's always debatable, you might decide how many outliers should we get rid of to make our line more accurate, and that would then impact your calculation right here. You might also argue that even though on average, this is saying for every month you add, the price goes up by about $4.28, you might argue that you can't just assume it goes up forever, there are certainly limits, and you can even talk about other things like the trends you see here. For example, I see between these months a lot of climbing, but then you see a period of months where it decreases over here, right? So there's some decreasing and increasing, lots of increasing, lots of decreasing, and then relatively flat. So another thing you might argue is, well, perhaps this trend is going back too far, right? In order to maybe get an accurate portrayal of the next four years, you might not go back. What are we going back here about six, seven years? you might instead just pick a more recent trend, like maybe from this point on, and that would change your equation. And that kind of brings up this idea that mathematics, and when we model in mathematics, I should say, when we pick a model like this, there's a lot of debate about where to start, what to include, what to disclude, what to get rid of. And in, in that way, you'll find that mathematics is not so set, right? A lot of people see mathematics as a very exact, undebatable thing, but there's lots of room for debate here, and I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Thanks.